And we are back. Oh my god, it's been way too long. Hello, everyone. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the little leaf vacation right over there. Wasn't expecting that. Hello, welcome back if you're new here. Or not even welcome back. Welcome in for the very first time. Today, we are actually going to be building for the Red Fox. And we're also doing a little bit of an education stand over here. Kind of like an animal talk area. Definitely an animal talk area. It's been so long since I actually built this, guys. I'm so sorry. Uh, real life got in the way. Uh, I've... Oh, there's so much stuff to talk about. <laughs> um, I'll probably sputter a whole bunch of that stuff in throughout my videos. Uh, just talking about, like, all the zoos I've been to and stuff like that. One of my friends actually came, like, all the way over to Rhode Island just to visit. Um, both me and Nick. And it was super awesome. So, I'll, we'll probably have some stories about that later down the line. But, making our way throughout here, I really wanted this area to have a nice little keeper stand. Nothing really too crazy, but something I really wanted to integrate are the new kind of like keeper talks and stuff like that. So this one over here will be for the Danube Crest and Newt. Actually, no, it's for the Fire Salamander. Uh, I figured it would be a really fun animal to have over here, just because it's colorful. It kind of fits like that nice forest aesthetic. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it, which by the way, I do need to say Wildwoods is changing locations. Um, even though I love this location for like, you know, the backdrop and everything, I think I'm going to move it to New Hampshire or something because it just occurred to me because our friend is from California. They don't really get too many color changing leaves over there, whether it be in Oregon, Washington or California, like Northern California. Um, yeah, I didn't realize that. I, I can't believe you guys let me get off scot-free for this long under this, like, absolute lie I've been selling myself. But you can see what I'm working on over here. I'm using free build to kind of sink those keeper talk stands down into the ground. And I cover them up, like, the, uh, front rows with mulch and a big piece of log over there. So that way it looks like we have a small crowd over there as opposed to, you know, a big crowd, which is kind of the way that I want the zoo to be. I don't want it to be like this big bustling zoo. I want it to be something that is relatively small. Uh, small zoo charm is something that I believe in now more than ever, um, just because I've been revisiting all these small zoos around New England and it really does sell just how I don't know how charming a small zoo can really be, if that makes sense. So we're working on this little area right in between this, as well as the pathway to the gift shop. And it's nothing really too crazy. We're sticking with our regular palette over here. I'm using a mix of all different kinds of plants, whether they be ferns, whether they be the grasses, and even the red poppies from the conservation pack. I'm using a lot of those as well. And what I also throw in here are these leaves. These leaf piles are incredible to have in here. You really do see these in like a whole bunch of New England zoos and to complement those I threw in those sugar maples I'm trying to use those as much as possible throughout here and I'm also trying to use a whole bunch of wide variety of different trees and stuff like that to really help build up our foliage palette really help it feel like it's a nice forested area and not get too kind of tired of the same tree over and over again so making our way throughout here and I'm adding all these small little details I know it's past the Halloween season but I'm still gonna put up these jack-o'-lanterns all over the place and yeah I was looking for some new kind of um inspiration but I really couldn't find any uh using free build to get these barrels all across the board right over there and I even do a custom table over here just in case if the keeper needs to set something down whether it be like the little carrying case for the actual salamander or whether it be some other props that they would use in their keeper talks that's something I really wanted to include over there and I think it turned out pretty good I kind of make all these small little details on it it looks super cute to begin with uh, so making our way throughout here always important to decorate the back of builds as well every time I look on the reddit I'm like oh my gosh please guys take this one piece of advice if framing your build is just as important as a build itself and making sure that you have a nice centralized area that you're building in as well as keeping it blended in with the surrounding area is the number one trick I can give for you guys for really figuring out how to do like become building masters really uh, what I'm also doing over here is something a little convoluted. Unfortunately, I didn't have the time or the real inspiration uh, to build the three red fox habitats that I wanted to, which, by the way, we're building for the red fox. Um, I was looking for all these different morphs because I 
fell in love with these morphs. I really want all of them in my zoo. Uh, but I really want all these guys in the zoo right over here. So we only build the front uh, yard, which is totally fine. Later down the line, if I'm feeling up for it, I'll build one of like the backstage yards later down the line. But of course today we're just focusing on the main trail. We're going to keep that going throughout the rest of, like, Wildwood Zoo. I'm just so excited about this zoo. It's so nice. Um, I apologize. I do want to say I'm sorry for not really keeping up to date with content. I've been very busy recently, both with real life, with, you know, friends come and come visit, uh, with work, with all these different things. And, of course, Jurassic World Evolution 2 modding, which is going to get its own video, I want to say, sometime this week, maybe sometime next week. Uh, I've been having a lot of fun with that. I know I don't really do too much Jurassic World Evolution 2 content. I hope to actually kick that up a notch in a little bit uh, because I have been having a lot of fun modding the game and I really want to get back into the game itself uh, just because it seems pretty fun. I also love this wall back over here. It's just a really nice uh, backstage wall. Uh, red foxes are able to climb so I have it nice and high. Uh, red foxes can escape very well and I should probably honestly put some hot wire on the top of that I'll try and figure out a new hot wire technique later down the line since we can't really use modded props which by the way big apologies for mod users um yeah we're getting there we're certainly getting there it's been a very hectic week uh for modders in general um hectic week I should probably say hectic month really um, it's been a struggle, but making our way throughout here and adding all these little barriers and like all these little compliments to the barriers themselves, really happy with that. So we have two different kinds of sections for that build. We have a plexiglass kind of section and we also have just like an unobstructed section with like a little bit more protection up above. Um, what I've noticed in a lot of zoos that I've been to recently is that a lot of zoos tend to trust guests a lot uh, with getting into the habitat. Even like the Bronx Zoo lion habitat, you can pretty much just walk right in there. And three people have this year, believe it or not. But a lot of zoos have a lot of trust in the clientele, so that's exactly what I want to try over here. So you can see I'm working on these little kind of like log barriers up here. More so about keeping the foxes down there rather than keeping the guests out. Uh, keeping these over here will definitely reduce the likelihood of the foxes escaping. Uh, and they don't even go up there, which is actually very good. It works out a lot better than I imagined. Uh, so I'm using a whole wide variety of different logs from all across the planet zoo packs. I have some of the Australia ones in there. I have some of like the European pack, like climbing logs. Uh, just a whole bunch of stuff in there. And I also decorate it with a whole bunch of rocks. Uh, these faux rocks are super awesome for this. And I also try something else a little bit new. I'm using the cladding rocks for like the first time in forever to make a nice realistic rock wall. Uh, a lot of the time whenever I do use the faux rocks, they do have this air of uh, faux to them. Uh, who would have imagined? But they do definitely feel like they don't belong there or they were placed there from another area. Because when you're working with rocks like that, you're not getting them from the natural area probably. You're probably buying them in bulk and they're probably farmed somewhere else. So that's why I like to use faux rocks kind of like that as like the rocks that aren't really natural to the area. Uh, but throughout here, um, I'm definitely using a lot more of the natural faux, not the natural faux rocks. That's a contradiction, if I have ever heard one. No, I'm using the natural rocks a lot more in this habitat, and I will be using them a lot more as I make my way through. But you can see over here, I'm going to work on the actual foliage itself now that I have kind of like the preliminary base of the habitat done. So I finally get to moving around and uh, kind of messing around with all these beautiful plants and stuff like that. So already utilizing our already determined palette, which by the way, if you want to go see us determine that palette, uh, Wildwoods is a series, believe it or not. It's just not a one-off. So you guys can gladly go back and check out those videos again and just check out what I've been doing in here. I really wanted this habitat to feel a lot more overgrown than the other ones because Red Fox is... You can't really get in the same habitat as them. A lot of keepers have precautions with them just because they are canines. Uh, they can be aggressive if they so choose to be. A lot of people actually do like have pet foxes, and I'm not knocking 
not knocking on that at all. Maybe I can knock on it. I don't really know. But our keepers would not have direct contact with them at all. Uh, so in order to clean the habitat, they would put them backstage, yada yada. But they really wouldn't clean the habitat all too much uh, because it would be overgrown. And that's something I really want to make apparent over here. Also using these yellow trees, um, stopping myself from getting too far off the beaten path. Uh, these yellow trees are super awesome for this park. I just rediscovered them again. So we're going to make those definitely stick out throughout this entire build. So I'm super excited about that. Also working on the actual backstage holding itself using the other pieces that we've kind of like kind of made over the course of Wildwood Zoo. Definitely love to make these just like reuse them because it's super awesome and super easy just to really just make these and then just duplicate them over and over again. Like, that is such an awesome way to really create these defining themes throughout your zoo and really keep it coherent with the rest of it. It just makes me super happy. So we're reutilizing so many of this stuff. Uh, always the duplicate button is your best friend. Uh, so I take the door from the raccoon habitat. I'm also utilizing some of the decals. Big shout out to Caesar Creates for that little technique. Uh, I've been loving that. It's so fun to do. I don't blame him for doing that. I was trying to make some bird safe glass over there, but we don't have small enough pieces for it, unfortunately. And also decorating the outside of the walls as well, just making sure that those feel natural. I do a lot of stuff off camera, just, you know, just stuff that would kind of bore you guys. Uh, but all that being said, I hope you guys did enjoy this episode. Unfortunately, I didn't let the guests in here, so you can't really see it come to life. But you guys will be able to get some good shots of those red foxes running around. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you guys already know what to do or what not to do if you didn't enjoy it. Uh, but you guys have been an absolute blast recently. I hope you guys are still having fun with the Twilight Pack. Um, it's just such an awesome pack to me, especially after like seeing half these animals in real life. But that is really it, my friends. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. Always the best and have the most wonderful of wonderful days. Bye bye now.